Hello everybody, hope you're doing okay. Sorry I haven't done any of these shoe reviews for a while, but here's the Endorphin Speed 4. And I think I should like this one, shouldn't I? Because I've had 10 pairs of Endorphin Speeds now over all the different versions. And my final conclusion from this, in the first 20 seconds of the video, is exactly the same as the Endorphin Speed 3. Well, it's not exactly the same, but when I've done a couple of runs, an Endorphin Speed 3 on one foot and the 4 on the other, then swapped them over for another run, done about an hour. And after a few minutes, I couldn't really even tell which is the difference and I had to look down on my feet to see the only difference was that one's green and one's white with a bit of orange. So let's get into a bit more detail about why I think that is. And if you like the Endorphin Speed 3, then maybe the, if you can find that cheaper, that may be a better pickup. But there are some advantages to Endorphin Speed 4, I think, other than the fact it's a brand new shoe. First thing to say in terms of dimensions, both have got a similar eight mil drop. I think it's 36 mils at the back in the stock size and 28 at the front. And it's exactly the same in the Endorphin Speed 3 here. I would say that the outsole width is pretty much the same and on foot, they sort of feel is similar. I would say the lockdown is slightly, very slightly better in the Endorphin Speed 4 but I'll do an on-shoe demonstration to show you what I mean there. It's got up in slightly in weight, the Endorphin Speed 4. It's about 305 grams average in my size, although one of these shoes was eight grams more than the other one. It's not great quality control. Usually blame Nike for that sort of thing, but it just goes to show that all shoe manufacturers have the same problem. And this one is about 288. So it's gone up about sort of 15 to 20 grams. Could I actually tell the difference on foot? No, but there's also that psychological thing that you're wearing a heavier shoe than you had before. The lightest of all the different versions was actually interesting, the Run Speed 2 here, which is probably my favorite. And that was about 280 grams. And I've actually had four pairs of this one now. I've just started a fourth pair that I bought with eBay. I think the difference between the, the Speed 2 and the Speed 3 and 4 now is that the width of the outside has just got slightly bigger. It seems to be a trend in recent years that the, all the shoe companies have suddenly decided that people have got wider feet than they had a few years ago, which is a bit odd because I'm still the same person and my feet are just as narrow as they've ever been. So it's always a bit disconcerting when shoes get wider for no particular reason. But I must say in the endorphin speeds, it's not really a problem. Just have to tighten the laces a bit more than I would do in some shoes, but there's plenty of other shoes that are even wider still. And you can see here from the front here how much I've had to put in the laces. But it does help with these sort of like lace loops now. A lot of people say they don't really like them. And I do find that quite handy because I think it just enables you to pull in the laces a bit more comfortably. And for gusseted tongue fans like Aubrey, it, I'm pleased to say it's still a gusseted tongue. So tick in the box there. For outsole uh, favourites like Ed Buds, I would say that... The outsole in the fall on the face of it looks a bit better because of this sort of rubber sort of lattice construction here compared to the three. But when I did a run yesterday and it had been hailing, so there's quite a lot of surface water on the ground. And I didn't really say there was any difference in traction between the two. So for me, maybe to the fact I'm sort of 73 kilograms and wear size UK 13 feet, but maybe I've got a bit more stabilization than most runners. But yeah, didn't really have any problems. And if I thought I'd come to any area where I thought it would be a problem, then obviously the best thing to do is ease down a bit. But if you look at the front of the three there, it's just sort of like Paul did as much as the other one, isn't it? I mean, in terms of ride, the Speed for me has always been a shoe that is not necessarily a speed shoe. It's one of those shoes that if you didn't have any other shoes around, and you fancied to get up and going, then you certainly could. I remember I was in Portugal last summer and I thought I'd make a change from wearing the vaporizer, go and do a session in the speed ones I had with me. And it was absolutely fine for that. I would say it's a shoe that perhaps not necessarily that I would obviously take for a speed work now, but then it's partly because nowadays it's just got so many different shoes that are sort of inverted commas racers. And I mean, there's been like four or five new releases, haven't they, in the last few weeks from the likes of Hoka, the CD01, then you've got the New Balance Elite 4. You've got the Alpha 5 3, of course, which I didn't like very much. And yeah, it just seems so many shoes now that all serve a similar purpose. So I think for me, I just pull out some of my old vapor flies or some of those other ones when I want to do a fast session. And for me, I think the problem is, is that when I go out for an easy run, do I really want to be wearing a shoe that's nearly 400 grams for an easy plod? So for this one, it's got enough cushioning but also the fact, the feeling that you're not actually having to do a lot of hard work. The only downside I would say with the endorphin speeds is that people do say after a while they sort of bottom out. I mean, sometimes I think, is that really the runner than the shoe? Because I mean, if you run for any length of time, then often obviously your ability and fitness comes into it. I mean, I would say that the nylon plate in this one means that it's sort of quite sort of bendy. I mean, they've all been quite bendy there. There's the three, seems to bend quite well. And the two bends quite well as well. But I did notice that uh, with a slightly relatively lower stack at the front now, only 28 compared to some of the sort of high stack shoes, you do tend to sort of feel a bit more sort of ground fill-ish. I mean, I think I could feel the nylon plate a bit as I've been going on for a while, but it's quite a nice feeling in a way. 
that you've got a shoe on that's not too heavy. I would say that it's not the most sort of snappy ride compared to the out and out racers. So if you're just nipping along, it sort of cruises quite well, but if you sort of go up a little hill, then sometimes I feel that I haven't got quite the bounce off the ground that I'm getting, but equally, with a shoe like this, you just think that, yeah, I've just got less shoe on foot than some of these other ones, like say that I've been the Vomero or the Pegasus or even the Invincible that I've been wearing, or even the Nova Blast 3 and 4 that I've been wearing as well. Just I feel when I put those sort of shoes on, they're just a shoe that naturally wants me to go slower. And if I, at the end of the run yesterday, I did some strides in this one, and they coat for absolutely fine with it, but I mean, it wouldn't be a shoe that I want to do an out and out session with, as I said, but just as a general purpose shoe, it seems to fit a very good purpose. If you look at the sort of the side on view between the three and the four, it does seem like the sculpting of the plate is somewhat different. I mean, I think they talk about these wing plates. I never like to sort of talk about specs too much. It's just sort of like you're a second hand car salesman reading out the specs. And sometimes I feel like, you know, the reviewers don't really understand what they're even saying. And then when you talk about speed roll, you know, you kind of think, oh, they've got this sort of ability that if you land there and it suddenly like jumps you forward. Well, you know, I don't really sort of feel that to be honest. I just feel like I've got like a, a reasonably sort of cushioned shoe. It's not ultra soft, the speeds in a way, which is what I quite like. It's quite a good blend between a shoe that's not too firm, but it's not too soft either. I would say that in terms of relative firmness now, perhaps these are on almost on the side of being slightly firm, which is crazy in compared to they used to be a couple of years ago, but certainly a shoe that you think, well, yeah, I've got enough under my foot, but if I really wanted the maximum cushioning for that and my legs were trash, then perhaps it was, wouldn't be the shoe. But for most runs, it does allow me to sort of like get on a, a fairly good clip and just sort of keep going, which is kind of why I like it. Before the endorphin speeds, I used to wear the peg turbos. So hoping that the peg turbo four later this year will sort of bring that uh, shoe back into the rotation possibly. And before that, it was the Adidas Boston's before they made them clunky sort of like bricks. Well, that's not I think in my size anyway. In terms of price, this is a bit expensive, 180 at retail, but uh, fortunately with the code from the Everyday Runner 40 Runs, managed to get a 10% disc off at Start Fitness, not sponsored of course, so brought the price down from 180 to about 160 odd, so a bit of a better pill to swallow, but still think that if, if well, I had a look just now that the Start Fitness has got quite a lot of the Speed 3s, it's considerably cheaper price, and I think you still can get the discount as well. So I picked up this pair actually from them, uh, also with the code, for a little more than a hundred pounds a few months ago. So it's, it's my second pair of the threes. And, and when I was sort of doing these sort of A-B tests, as I call them, where I wear a shoe on each foot, I kind of thought, oh, I just bought another version of the, of the three. But as I said, there are a certain advantages to this one. I think initially when I put on the four, I just thought it was margin, marginally less soft than the three. But having now run for there an hour, rotating the two different shoes each time, then, I wouldn't say there's really any difference really and if you could spot a difference between the two then you're perhaps you're better a judge of things these things than me they also do say that the outsole has changed but when i look at it just from the pattern alone it doesn't seem much difference it does pull out so you know if you want to put your own insole in which i'm never quite sure why you want to do that but if you've got you know particular reasons then obviously you can but I, I, I can't really tell any difference between these two outsoles. As I said, I've run in both shoes, one on each foot, and uh, yeah, no difference. And even the fact that the one shoe was 15 to 20 grams heavier than the other one, I didn't feel like I was sort of like pulled over to, the, to one side, as it were, which is quite good. So it probably just goes to show there's a tolerance of about 20 grams between shoes that, you know, you can't even really tell the difference. And my Vomero's were actually about 15, 16 grams difference anyway. And I thought, well, psychologically, that's a massive difference. And I feel like I'd be like pulling one leg than not the other. But once you get going, don't really feel it. But I mean, obviously, it's a bit annoying when you get a shoe that far out and you sort of question whether you should even send them back. So I've just changed seats to put these shoes on to show you how they are. You can see here that the lace is in the Endorphin Speed 3 and the 4. There's quite a lot of excess for me. I've got them rather sort of uh, pulled in, as it were. But I do like to have my shoes quite sort of tight. So let's put the 3 on the left foot. This is how I was wearing them yesterday. And put a 4 on the right foot. Perhaps slightly easier to get into in the 4. Just this material here. It's an interesting tongue where it's got like a two-layer sort of very thin mesh. It's quite nice in a way, whereas the three was just perhaps a bit more to it. There are some things in the four, like the sort of the cutaway there, you think, oh, it's saved weight, whereas it wasn't there. And you think, well, maybe it's just the rubber on the outside that's bigger. But if I pull these in, I've got these quite tight there. And these lace lips allow you to pull in the shoes quite nicely. And you can see there it's hugging my foot quite well. Plenty of room in the toe box. And I think I need to cut these laces. 
but I can kind of do similar with the three. Just feels like I'm sort of pulling these in slightly more in the three, but both of these shoes, I'm really having to pull them in quite a lot, but this is pretty standard for me, so don't be alarmed. Most people, <laughs> your feet won't look any more like this at all. So yeah, you'd see that there's just marginally more room between the tongues in the four. So just so it just sort of shows it just fits, maybe it's just a fraction sort of narrower for me, but in terms of foot, I've got these hugging on quite well and similar amount of room in the toe box there. So yeah, absolutely fine. I think in a way I just prefer the four, just for the looks of it. I think this sort of like, it's slightly easier to get on as I said, just feel that this sort of like arrangement here is sort of quite sort of like tugging it on my sort of midfoots here so much. But yeah, other than that, you know, once you've each got them foot and as I say, very little difference. And it just goes to show that sometimes between versions, well, you know, it's almost like a spot the difference competition between the two. So as I said, if you, like the three and see one at a bargain, then maybe not necessarily rush out and get the four. But if you are looking for a new shoe and you see the four and you like the colorway, that sort of thing, then yeah, go ahead, go for it. And then if you get a 10% discount, so much the better. So I hope you found this interesting. Is this a shoe that you're looking to get? Have you had endorphin speeds in the past? If you don't have endorphin speeds, what other sort of like similar sort of like lightweight trainer are you using? I use Boston 12, Deviate Nitros. I've never actually tried it in them, perhaps they ought to, but what else other shoes are there? Are we sort of holding out for the Peg Turbo to reappear, etc. etc. Anyway, I hope you found this interesting. Like and subscribe to that and see you in the next one then. Bye.